Hey everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to be showing you a very simple random number generator. And you've probably seen a random number generator that's somewhat like this before. But what makes this different is that it generates statistically random numbers that are somewhat well distributed. So, if just for example, I hit the button, I'll get a random number between 0 and 7, so this is 3 bits, in this case 5. And in case you're wondering, this is a stackable design, so you could just use slash slash stack and just create as many bits as you want. But I have it set at a preferred just for sake of example. So in that case, I got a 5. Alright, if I hit the button again, in this case, I get a 1. Alright, fair enough. And if I hit it one more time, just because why not, I get 0. So, there you go, just a quick example of it being used. And now I'm going to show you how it works. So it all starts with this monostable circuit right here. When I flip the on switch it will turn this torch on for, as you can see, 8 ticks. And this will send a pulse into my compact delay line memory. As you can see I have one memory cell for every bit, and since I have 3 bits that's 3. If you had 8 bits that would be 8, if you had 16 bits that would be 16, and so forth and so on. But every single one of these cells will have precisely one byte of information. And this monostable circuit is timed very specifically so that it will write precisely four bits of information into every single one of these memory cells. And this gives us a very interesting setup because it will give us precisely four ones in every cell and precisely four zeros. And this is important because a truly random number will have an equal chance of every digit being generated. So since I have four zeros and four ones in memory, this puts us in a very good position to do that. And that's the first step of how the random number is being generated. So the second part of how it's generating a random number is all these repeater delays. They are set up in a very specific manner to act as a bit filter. They won't actually change any of the values in memory, but what they will do is they will change the speed at which it's passing through memory. And that's important because if I had them all at exactly the same delay, then I would be only getting two different numbers. I would be getting whatever the highest number is, and zero. And it would just alternate between those. And that's not really what we want. So I have the delays set up the way that I do, so that it will generate them in a somewhat unpredictable pattern. And it's not truly unpredictable, because nothing could ever really truly achieve that in Minecraft, but they are done pretty well. And there's actually a lot going into figuring out what a really good set of repeater delays is. But I'll talk about that when we actually start building this. So that's the second part. The second part is the bit filter. So the final part of the system is getting the random number out. And this right here is actually not the random number, but the inverse of the random number. And it technically doesn't really matter but, you know, it's better to get the number that was intended rather than the inverse, if you can. So I do uninvert it, and I have a very simple control wire with torches, just to control for getting the output or not. And since I am putting this into D flip-flops, I technically do not need this. But, you know, if you didn't need the D flip-flops for whatever reason, then this is how you would do it if you didn't need it. So that's pretty much the reason I have that there. But then I have that, um, the value coming out, and being put into just a set of D flip-flops. They're just basic D flip-flops that I've always been using, and yeah. And when I hit the Get Number button, it will deactivate these torches, so that the random number can actually go through. And then it will be saved into the D flip-flops. So if I hit this, I'll get whatever random number is being held at the time. In this case, it was apparently a 2. So there we go. That's the whole process of generating a random number using this system. So now I'm going to show you how to build this. And we're going to start with the memory. 
So to start off, we're going to need four repeaters in a row like this. And we will need three of these. So I'm just going to build three rows. And the reason we need three rows is because we're building a three bit random number generator. If you wanted an 8 bit random number generator, you'd want 8 rows. If you wanted a 64 bit random number generator, you'd want 64 rows. And so forth and so on. So, now that we have three rows, we're going to want to set up the bit filter. So, there's no rule that says this is a good bit filter or this is a bad bit filter. You could, if you wanted to, just play around with repeater delays until you got something that you were happy with. But, if you want to make a good build filter, then generally speaking, you'll want to go for prime number. And the reason for that is, prime numbers, by definition, only have two multiples, themselves and one. And because they only have two multiples, that means that they will never align with each other. So, for example, if I had one repeater that had a total delay of 4 ticks, another that had a total delay with 8 ticks, you sh yeah, sure, one's going twice as fast as the other, but they're going to align, so to speak, every 4 ticks, because, you know, they both have the multiple 4 in common. But So if you have all prime numbers, then you'll have no common multiples, and that means that they'll never align until they've completed every possible combination, more or less. So, there, there you go. So now let's talk about how we're going to incorporate a prime number into our repeater delays. So there's two ways of thinking of this. The first way of thinking of this is saying, okay, I want every single memory cell to add up to a prime number. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's good because it will generate the most different random numbers before repeating the pattern. But... The thing I don't like about that way of doing it is that it makes it difficult to assign precisely four bits into every single one. So you'll sort of lose some accuracy there. And also it does produce a little bit of awkward patterns where it will sometimes go through periods where it will phase through almost entirely just the max and zero before eventually going back. And you know, I don't really like that. So there's nothing really tr wrong with it, but I prefer the second way, and that is have all the repeater delays across every single memory cell sum up to a prime number, and just try to get every individual cell to add up to as close to 16 as possible. And the reason we're doing 16 is because two repeater delays is halfway between 4 and we have 8 bits, so it's 2 times 8 is 16. And that way of doing things is, it's not bad, it, it's good, it's just, if you do it wrong, you can get the delays sort of acting weirdly, they can sometimes align with each other, or so the two bits will be exactly the same, and it can be weird, but if you do it right, you can get some good delays. So hopefully now you understand enough to, to pick out your bit filter, I prefer the second way, it does require a little bit more playing around to get a good set, but I think it's worth it in the end. So with that all out of the way, let's finally start setting up the bit filter. So I'm just going to use the exact same delays I used before. So these delays are, and pay attention, 3, 3, and 1. So that's the bottom row. Next is 2, 1, and 3. Then we have 3, 3, and 1. Then we have 1, 2, and 1, and that is the entire bottom row. So there we go, we have a nice bit filter set up, for at least the bottom row. So now we have to build the second part of the memory system, which is just doing the double inversion to send the signal upwards. And there we go, we have everything upwards, and we want blocks on top of it because we're going to get the signal out of here. So now, once the signal's traveled up here, it will want to go into these row of repeaters. And there we go. So this is going to be our top row. And here are the delays for this. We will have 1, 1, and 3. 
we will have 3, 1, and 3. We will have 2, 2, and 1. And we will have 1, 2, and 3. And now, lastly, to get the memory back into the bottom, we will want blocks right here with redstone on top. And we'll just want a block on top of that, and that'll send the signal back down again. So now let's build the monostable circuit. The way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to put down two pieces of redstone and a torch. This torch is going to be what's controlling the monostable circuit. And now I need the repeaters that will control how long this torch stays on. I want eight ticks. And the reason I want eight ticks is because I'm trying to get every single one of these cells to be 16, which isn't perfect since one of them is 15 because it has to sum to 47 but it's close enough and the reason I'm going 8 is because I'm wanting 16 and 16 divided by 2 is 8 if you were doing the other way you would want one monostable circuit for every single cell because every cell would have its own prime number and you would get as close as you can but yeah so I'm gonna go over top of this with a torch and there we go. Now, when I power this, it will turn off this torch, which will turn on this torch. And it will also activate these repeaters, which will turn off this torch eight ticks later. And the last thing we need is just repeaters, so that the signal from the monostable circuit will go into the random number generator. And there we go. If you wanted, you could just say, you're done here, because this is all you need to generate random numbers. But I know there's going to be some people wondering about my system that gets a random number. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So, in order to get a random number out, we're going to use these torches. Which, as you know, are the inverse. So I'm going to dig out three blocks here. And I'm going to place redstone wire. And the reason I'm going to be do this is this gives me room for my turn off command. Which I'm going to put right here which I'm not sure if I explained this or not, but I'll explain it again anyways after I build the wire. So here's my turn off wire. If I send power to this wire, it will send power to all the repeaters, and that will send power to these torches. And what this does is, if since the system as I have it set up, is relying on two inversions to send the signal upwards. If I'm sending power into this torch, then this torch will always be off. So, essentially, the signal will come around, it'll go into this torch, it'll turn off, but it won't go upwards because this torch will be off. And that's the way it will be turned off. So now we need the get number system. The way I do this is I just invert it, that way I'll get the actual number intended, since remember these wires are the inverse. And I'm gonna put redstone on top of this, and torches, and this will, will get a random number, assuming I have you, you know, some random number in there. Like right now I have it off, so I don't have a random number. So this actually doesn't do anything. But if I had it on, then in theory I'd have a random number, and therefore I'd be able to get it out by just flipping the switch. Or if I wanted, I could put a button. And in fact, I will put a button, because buttons are cool. So last thing I need is a D flip flop And I don't really need a D flip flop but that's just the way I'm storing the number. So I'm going to build this in the exact same way I've always built my D flip flops And that is, I start out like this, with my two torches. And I'm not going to explain this, because I think I explained it fairly well in video 7 of my building a minecraft computer tutorial so if you want to know how and why this works you'll probably want that video and did I accidentally? yes I did so this right here is a D flip flop and yeah and now I can just stack it so I'm just gonna use world edit because I'm lazy and I actually want this so there we go and I go stack, so just stack two, and this gives me some D flip flops. And the final thing I need to do is just connect these, and again if you just wanted to save the number, you could just 
ignore having this wire here, but I have it because it's a second way of doing it, and just people can see how that's done. So now, final thing we need to do is just test and make sure this works. So, let's begin. To start off with, I'll need the turn on lever, and in fact, just for fun, I'll make it a turn on button. So I'll push the turn on button, and it will send four bits into my memory cells, and those will start cycling, and now, now that it's turned on at least, I should be able to hit this and get some number that's not zero. So if I hit it, I get, well in this case, it happens to be zero. But if I hit it again, I should get some other random number, which happens to be zero again. But if I keep hitting it, I'll eventually get a number that's not zero, in theory. I think I, this is interesting, I think I might have screwed up my D flip flops because they don't appear to be saving. And, in fact, that is a problem. I forgot a torch right here. So now if I hit it, I'm going to get some number saved, which hopefully is not zero. And in this case, it isn't. It's a six. So if I hit it again, I get a four. If I hit it again, I get a two. And so forth and so on. I could keep hitting this all day. And, um, yeah. So there you go. There's my simple random number generator and how to build it. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have fun generating random numbers.